was stateside and I wanted to check it out. It was, there was a yearning in my heart to try something short term. Um, and that's all the further I could see at the time was short term. Basically, I just was asked by a friend if I wanted to join. And honestly, I didn't. I didn't want anything to do with getting out of this country. And uh, after a while, I just felt God tugging at my heart. And for some reason, I said yes, knowing in my heart I didn't want to go. So I told him, yeah, three months. Three months, I'll do it for three months. And seven years later, you know. Paul Hartman with four Cuban young men, he was training for ministry, had a service at our Bible college. So out in the front, Froyer was somebody recruiting for somebody to teach English as a second language in Japan. And uh, I saw that and I was like, oh, this is God. My parents were village Bible teachers. They, they call them catechists or whatever. So they taught Bible in the village area. He sent me to Honduras uh, for my first trip. And I was 15 at the time. and. Um, so that was my first trip, and I went. It was, it was really an awesome experience. Uh, but there was just a great fulfillment in helping these other people. It was very hard to believe that God was going to use me, but God just wanted to prove me wrong, show me that I am worth it. I chose to serve because God called me. I didn't really choose Japan. Japan chose me. I, I got so much interested because other people went out. They didn't stay where they were. I was given much. I want to plow back what other people have planted in me. I have a real burning desire for people and so I really just feel called to it. We know there's a, there's a need for reaching Muslims stateside uh, as well as around the world. So um, that's where it's at today. And it's just being there with them, sharing their lives, the things that they love and enjoy, and being a part of that. My expectation was you go and live in a grass hut. And uh, it's definitely not like that. It's a lot more involved. A kid came up to me and he hugged me and he looked at me and he said, uh, if you hadn't have come, if you hadn't listened to God, I wouldn't have a brother that I love and trust. And that, that hit me, you know? Uh, we had ministries to the kids and the homosexuals and the homeless and just the needy and everyone. We did all sorts of outreaches and um, it was just an awesome experience. And I'd love to go back. It, it caused me to overcome fears. Oh, it completely changed my aspects on everything. Uh, God is definitely a parent in my life, and He's shown me a lot of neat things, both spiritually and, and physically. I walked up to a little girl, and she was crying, and I said, why are you crying? She said, did I do something wrong? And I said, what do you mean? And she said, you haven't hugged me today. Did I do anything wrong? And I said, no. I, you know, and I put my arms around her and I gave her a hug and she said, I thought that was it. And she took off running. So that was, that's kind of enjoyable to know that, you know, you are a part of their lives and you're important to them. You find out that you're effective, even though you don't think you're effective in that area. You can sense a peace in your heart. There is a satisfaction, especially when you see them go from their miserable condition, be outgoing and help others. You change the vision of the world. Your, your view of the world changes. It totally opened my eyes um, just to see that I can be used, that like we, we truly do have the ability to change the world. Uh, we've been in places where we've heard gunfire or when we went into Baghdad, um, Iraq, we were following a convoy. But when we were in the center of God's will, there's a peace about that. And uh, no matter where you are, you can, you can keep going forward knowing that you're in the center of God's will. Wanting to be in every, 
every circumstance and wanting to be as big a help as you possibly can and realizing that you can't, realizing that you're not Superman, you're not, you know, you can't be all things to all people. That's kind of hard. I remember once saying yes to everything, CCC in Cuba, because I didn't want to admit that I didn't know how to speak yet. I'd studied several years. One of the things is you have to wait. If you don't have personal transportation, it takes time to reach your destination. And sometimes you feel you have wasted time waiting, but that's the situation. I was under a lot of attack. Um, Satan was really just, you know, trying to convince me that I wasn't doing anything and that I was, you know, totally unexperienced and unprepared and didn't know what was going on, which was true. But the truth is that God was really using that and my inexperience in all the areas of ministry to really just use me. As the world has changed and gotten smaller, we have all these different cultures coming to our culture, uh, whether it's reaching the Chinese, whether it's the, the Hindus, the Buddhists, the Muslims, they're all here. And so I'd encourage people to get, get started around here. I don't understand it all. I just know God taught me when I was there. He's still teaching me today, and it's probably the way it's always gonna be. It has changed, and if you go in there with the right attitude and love for the, pe for the people, uh, you can be a terrific blessing. I won't be able to even be worthy enough to tie their shoes. I see it's just such a great God raising up young people, you know, young quite a bit younger than myself that are going to be just doing awesome things for God. But if tent making is a very useful thing, that's the future down the road. I don't really see myself doing anything full time for like years and years. More than that, it's, it's really just a lifestyle and so I, I'm really hungry to embrace that. Take the plunge if someone has an interest and, and even if they don't, I think everyone needs outreach and experience. Just be willing, more than anything. Be willing to serve, be willing to reach out, and be willing to show emotion more than anything. If you're called, why would you stoop to be a king? You know, as a king, you have provision, you have stuff like that, but you don't have that, that fulfillment of souls being saved seeing people come to the kingdom. Be ready to observe and ask questions. That's a good teacher of spirit. And then when they know you are really serious in trying to learn, not to offend, and then they just bend over backwards to help you. They care because you care. <laughs> yeah, they see you caring. You must be a learner. Don't go with the impression that you're going to teach them everything. You go to learn, because whether it's Africa, India, Latin America, Europe, they have a lot to teach us. They need to learn about the country, the customs, the traditions, before they go, and learn a few examples of the language, you know, some terminology. Learn a few things. That already breaks the ice when you arrive, you know. And if you go to a service and you sing one of their songs in their language, even if it might be broken syllables, they just like, say, this person has made an effort to reach us. It shows your, your willingness to be able to arrive there. There's a lot of good ways to get started, but just getting started, just uh, sticking your neck out. I would say go, definitely. God can use anyone. He used me, so <laughs> he can definitely use you. So I definitely encourage everyone to go. Jesus was among the people, and that's what he wanted from us more than anything, was to serve other people and be a part of their lives. <laughs>